So let's talk about making solutions, both the process of making a solution from a solid reactant and the process of making a dilution to a given concentration. And this involves a little bit of process and procedure that you need to do in the right order to make sure that your solution ends up with the concentration that you're expecting. So when you're making solutions from a solid, and really just in general, you're very rarely going to make just enough for one run through an experiment. A couple of exceptions there, of course, would be something as unstable, like say potassium permanganate. Potassium permanganate solution would be stable over a few days, but I certainly couldn't make it and then use it the next year, like I could with some solutions that we make and just keep for year to year and keep using. And of course, expensive compounds like silver nitrate, which has silver in it, um, you don't want to make a whole lot more of that than you need simply because the solid reactant itself is quite expensive. So let's say we have a reaction and we need 50 milliliters of a 0.1 molar copper 2 plus solution. You notice my slides are pretty in blue, just like copper 2. This is inexpensive. It's not very concentrated, so I'm not going to need a lot of solid reactant. And so if I need 50 milliliters, I might make 100 milliliters of this solution because that way, if something goes wrong, I don't have to remake a solution. And, you know, stuff happens, things get knocked over. You might have a spill. And if you make 100 milliliters, you'll certainly have enough in case you spill a little bit. So the copper 2 plus compound I have available to me is copper 2 chloride, which is a dihydrate. Copper 2 chloride with two moles of water for every one mole of salt. So we're going to have to think about how much water we would need to make this copper 2 chloride solution. So I have a desired molarity. I have a desired volume. I know that if I multiply molarity and volume, I'm going to get a number of moles or millimoles, and then it's fairly trivial to get from a number of moles or millimoles to a number of grams or milligrams, which I can measure out on a balance. So if I want 100 milliliters of a 0.1 molar solution, that means it's 0.1 millimoles per milliliter. You can see my milliliters will cancel, one on the top, one on the bottom, opposite sides of the fraction bar. And I know that I need 10 millimoles of the copper to chloride dihydrate solution, which would be great if I had something that measured in millimoles, but I don't. So I need to get this into grams or milligrams. That would use the molar mass. Now, one very common mistake here is to forget about the mass of the water in a hydrate. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen people use 135-ish grams per mole for the copper chloride because they're forgetting about that 36 grams that comes from two moles of water. So it's important to look at a substance like this and make sure if you're using a hydrate that you account for the mass of the water. Otherwise, you won't have the right molarity of your desired ion in solution. So if I take 10 millimoles, or that means I can take that molar mass, 170.48 milligrams per millimole. Obviously, I can multiply by 10 in my head. I can tell I would move the decimal place once, and that's about 1,700 milligrams. 1,700 milligrams is more than grams, so I'll go ahead and convert that into grams. 1,000 milligrams is one gram. And that means that I need about 1.705 grams of the solid. And when I make a solution out of a solid, it's really important that I follow a particular procedure as I do it. Okay, so now I've gotten most of the things ready to start making the solution. So you can see I have measured out 1.7 grams of pretty blue copper chloride crystals on the balance. And I've actually measured out about three quarters of the water here. So this is about 75 milliliters. It doesn't 
really matter exactly how much it is because this isn't going to be my final volume. My final volume is going to be 100. But if I had just filled this up all the way perfectly to 100 milliliters and then added the solid, well, the solid is matter and takes up space. So I would actually end up with more than 100 milliliters worth of solution and my concentration wouldn't be right. So we always dissolve it first and then finish filling it to the amount that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into a beaker so I can stir and dissolve. And this is actually an important step because some things are going to need to stir for a while until they dissolve if they're not very soluble. You might need to use a magnetic stirrer and you can't do that inside a narrow graduated cylinder. Also, some solids will generate quite a bit of heat when they dissolve, and we wouldn't want to do that inside a sensitive glass piece of measuring equipment if I could do it inside a cheap beaker. So I'm going to go ahead and put the solid in here. And since I know I have a good 25 mils of extra volume, I'm going to go ahead and rinse off all the solid and make sure all of that ends up in here. And now I'm going to use the glass side of my stir rod and I'm going to stir until the solid completely dissolves. And copper chloride is very soluble, so that is already done. And hopefully you can see now this is a pretty light blue solution. So now I'm going to take this light blue solution and we're going to take it back to its total final volume. So I'm going to pour it back into the graduated cylinder. You can see now I've got about 80 to 85 milliliters because I used some water to rinse before. And I'm going to use a little bit of water again to rinse out and get all of the solution out of the beaker as well. And I usually like to do that with just a little bit of water twice, just to make sure that the only thing left in the beaker is water and not solution. And now I'm going to get down to eye level so that I can read the graduated cylinder correctly. And I'll just use the squirt bottle here because I don't need a ton to fill it all the way up exactly to the 100 milliliter line. And I'll be very careful as I get close to the end so that I don't overfill this. And just a tiny bit more. This might be a good spot to use a dropper if we needed to. So now I have 100 milliliters of solution. As you could probably zoom in on that and see that it's right at 100. And because I want to make sure that that's totally stirred and mixed, I would put that into a beaker or a bottle and stirring that up would make sure that it got all mixed and was homogenous throughout. So I've just made 100 milliliters of copper 2 chloride solution. So as you saw in the demonstration, when I'm making a solution from a solid, procedure-wise, you're going to measure out half to three quarters of the water needed and put it in a beaker. That's because to get something to dissolve, it might need stirring or heating. It might be an exothermic reaction and produce a great deal of heat that you don't want in a more delicate, graduated piece of equipment. And so I'm going to put it in a beaker, then I'll measure out the solid chemical and add that to the beaker. Remember, some solids are hygroscopic. They do absorb water from the air, and so you want to have things ready to go before you measure out the solid so it's not sitting around and waiting. Once that is fully dissolved, if that means it's had to be stirred for a while or heated, then you're going to put that back into the measuring device 
and you're going to rinse the beaker or any funnels, stir bars, stir rods, the little bit of water so that you get all of the solute back into the measuring device. And then you'll fill the measuring device to the desired amount. Now, in the video, of course, it's difficult for my cameraman to get at eye level when they're trying to get both me and the equipment in there. So, so even if the meniscus looks a little bit off from the video, please trust that I was at eye level and being very careful about getting it done. Also, we're going to see in a minute why it's really important to make a lot of solutions using deionized water and not water from the sink because of the hard water in San Antonio and many other locations. So sometimes it's really very important that you use distilled water to make a solution. And that's because in San Antonio, we have very hard water because we get our water from the Edwards Aquifer. That means that the water from the sink has dissolved carbonate ions in it. And most carbonates are not very soluble and that includes copper carbonate. So you can see I can take a scoopula tip here full and put it in the deionized water and you can see it very quickly dissolves and makes a pretty clear blue solution but watch what happens after a minute when i do this with the water from the sink in this beaker so i'll put a scoop in here and i'll stir And you can see that it does dissolve, but after a minute, it starts to look kind of different, especially at higher concentrations. You can see here as we wait, look at the difference between these two solutions. On the side here, with the water from the sink, we're forming solid copper carbonate. This is precipitating. And so the solution is now cloudy and we don't have available, as many available copper ions as we expected. So if you're making a solution and you see your solution becoming cloudy or something like this is happening, this is a bad sign and you need to figure out what's going on and what's going wrong. Another option if we need a solution is to dilute an existing more concentrated solution. A dilution adds water or solvent to a more concentrated solution and makes a less concentrated solution. Since you're just adding solvent, the moles of solute remains the same. That goes back to the formula that we always use for dilutions. Molarity times volume is equal to moles. Since the moles are the same in the dilute solution, then the molarity times the liters of the dilute solution will also be the same. Or to simplify it, M1V1 equals M2V2. So let's take a small amount of solution, say 50 milliliters of solution, and we'll make 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar from a 1.0 molar copper 2 plus solution. So we're going to need to know how much copper two plus concentrated solution we need to make this desired 1.1 molar solution. So we'll take M1V1 equals M2V2. Our M2V2 at the end here would be our 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar. So we write it, solve it, math it. So M2V2, divided by M1 would give me V1, the amount of the concentrated solution I need to make my dilution. So that would be 0.1 molar times 50 milliliters divided by our 1.0 molar concentration for our concentrated solution means that we need five milliliters of 1.0 molar solution. And let's see how this is done using a volumetric flask. Okay, sometimes when we need a small amount of solution, say I only needed 20 or 25 milliliters, so even making 50 milliliters 
of 0.1 molar solution would be making twice as much as I need. Well, we made 100 milliliters and we only needed a gram of the solid. So if we were only going to make 50 milliliters, we would now be only needing like half a gram of the solid. And that starts getting difficult to measure. So sometimes with small amounts, or if you are using something that is a liquid to begin with, you often will dilute a solution to get the correct amount. So we're going to make 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar copper sol solution from this one molar copper solution. And I've done the math here to figure out that I need five milliliters of the one molar solution and I have a exactly five milliliter tiny graduated cylinder. So I'm going to get close to the top here and then I'm going to get down at eye level and make sure that I am right where I need to be. And it looks like I maybe just need a drop or two more so that the meniscus is above the line. So now I have five milliliters of my dark blue concentrated solution. And I'm going to dilute that with distilled water to get 50 milliliters total. That's why I have a 50 milliliter volumetric flask here. And I'm going to add just a little bit of water to rinse down the side so we can maybe see a little bit better. You can see a 50 milliliter volumetric flask has exactly one measurement mark on it right here. That's because it does exactly one job. It measures out 50 milliliters but it measures it out accurate to two decimal places. So it only has one job, but it does that job really well. To make sure I don't spill any of my solution that I've carefully measured out, I'm going to put a funnel in here. And I'm going to pour the solution through the funnel in to the volumetric flask. And because I wanna make sure I get all of the copper in there, I'm going to rinse this and that will also help as rinsing the funnel out too. So just to be sure, I'll do a little bit of water through the funnel too, just to make sure everything is all rinsed out. And now you'll see when you start to fill one of these volumetric flasks that for the first while, it feels like it takes forever because you're filling up the wide bottom part of the flask. But don't take your eyes off of it because once you get up to the neck of the flask where it's much narrower, it starts to fill a lot faster than it did before. You can see how much quicker the water level is changing as it gets up into the neck. And once we get close, because I want this to be an accurate dilution. I'm going to use a pipette and again get down nice and eye level and go straight down making sure I don't get any bubbles until I get right at the line with the bottom of the meniscus. That's 50 milliliters of solution and before I use it I would want to cap it and make sure that I invert it gently a couple of times to stir it to make sure that the solution is homogenous throughout because it was most likely more concentrated down at the bottom where the solution started than it was at the top where I'd been adding a great deal of water.